Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Simply Nook Onyx. Now this is a really powerful mini PC coming in at 4 inches by 4 inches. And they do offer a few different CPU configurations with the Onyx. But the one we're taking a look at in this video is their most powerful offering right now. And it's definitely packing a really fast CPU. They call these 4x4s given the form factor. And as you can see, I mean, this is a very small PC. This could definitely replace a desktop system. We're going to take a look at a lot of stuff in this video. We're going to run some benchmarks, test out some PC games, and just overall performance. But yeah, I'm actually really excited about this because this thing's packing a 14-core, 20-thread CPU. Now, inside of the box, along with the Onyx Mini PC, we also get a Simply Nut branded vase mount or mounting system. You can mount this on the wall, back of a monitor, under a desk. It also comes with a 120-watt power supply and some mounting hardware for said mount and a 2.5 inch drive internally. You can actually pack up to 16 terabytes of storage in this mini PC. Overall look here, very reminiscent of the Intel NUX. Uh, we do have the larger or the taller style, given that we need to put a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom, and it does have a larger cooler than some of the other ones that we've seen. But when it comes to IO, up front we have one full-size USB 2.0 port, one full-size USB 3.2 port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Not much going on around this side, but over on the left hand side they have included a micro SD card reader. And around back we've got our power input, two full size HDMI ports, two more full size USB 3.2 ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and two USB 4 ports. Now these are only 20 gig ports, but they do support display out. So four displays in total utilizing both of those USB 4s and HDMI. Simply Nuck does offer this with a couple different CPU variants so you can actually pick and choose from their website. But with this one here, we've got the Intel Core i9-13900H. And with this, we get 14 cores, 20 threads, 6 performance cores up to 5.4 GHz and 8 efficiency cores up to 4.1. This thing really does put down some power. Built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units running at 1500 MHz. This came pre-installed with 16 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 at 5200 megahertz, but you can add up to 96 gigabytes here. It supports one M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. We can also add a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom. We can bring the total storage up to 16 terabytes in this mini, which is pretty crazy. Wi-Fi 6E, we've got that AX210 card from Intel, also has Bluetooth 5.2, and I'm running Windows 11. Now before we get into it, I do want to show you the internals here. It's actually really easy to get into. Four screws, we're going to remove the bottom, and it does have an integrated M.2 heatsink right with the case itself. You can also put that 2.5 inch drive right underneath there. And as you can see, supports dual channel SODIMM DDR5 and one 2280 M.2. It does support PCIe 4.0, so you can put a really fast NVMe drive in here. So first things first, I wanted to take a look at the BIOS, and there's one setting in here that's kind of important for these mini PCs. That's going to be our power and performance. Now from here, we've actually got a lot of different settings that we can mess around with. But from power and performance, we can set the power limit. So out of the box, this was set at balanced mode. We've also got a silent mode, performance mode, and manual. I'm going to be in performance mode. And what this is going to do is up that TDP and boost time on this 13900H, enabling better performance. Now, even in balance mode, still a great performing CPU, but just remember, everything that we're testing here is in performance mode. Once we have this set, save changes and exit. Going into this, I do have kind of an idea of what kind of performance we're going to expect out of the 13900H. I've tested a couple laptops with this, but those were paired up with dedicated GPUs. Now we've got plenty of cores here, uh, 16 gigs of DDR5 at 5200 megahertz, and of course the Intel Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units. Intel has been doing an amazing job with their Xe drivers. I mean, performance has definitely been upped on their uh, dedicated GPUs and even their Xe i GPUs here. So I think we will see a little jump in gaming performance. But real quick, I did want to give you an idea of what kind of TDP this is running at. Now remember, we did go to performance mode from the BIOS. I've got core temp. It's going to show our power right here. This is just uh, total CPU package power. And if we run a stress test, it's going to take all of those cores up to max. 60, 65 watts. 
Now, another thing we like to do here is actually stress out the iGPU because that's also going to need to take power from whatever we're sending to the CPU. So I've got GPU-Z. And you can see in performance mode, our total package power is actually much higher than 65 watts because right now we can actually get those XE graphics up to their max clock of 1500 megahertz. So this is around 75 watts in performance mode. Using the Onyx as an everyday desktop is going to work out for most people. I mean, we've got plenty of power here when it comes to web browsing, photo editing. You could do some video editing on this if you wanted to. Now, I wouldn't go crazy with 4K, but some home 1080p video editing would be totally possible. Wi-Fi 6, really quick here since we've got that Intel chip and uh, does have that killer Wi-Fi. This could definitely work out as a desktop replacement for a lot of people out there. And now I want to head over to YouTube real quick and check out some 4K video playback. So we'll go with this one here. It is 4K 60 HDR. And I do need to reset this. So we'll make sure we go back up to 4K. Had to make sure we reset stats for nerds. Drop frames will be displayed in the top left hand corner. I've always had really good luck with 4K video playback on these Intel chips. Even the lower end Celerons like the uh, 5105 does a great job. So I suspected that we wouldn't have any issues with this. Now we're just streaming from YouTube 4K 60 HDR. We had one drop frame and that's kind of normal with that initial load in. But yeah, if you wanted to do some 4K from the internal drive and external drive, your favorite app, your favorite website that supports 4K 60, this has more than enough power to handle it. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on the Onyx. And the first one here is Geekbench 6, single core 2492, multi 12204. I mean, this is really impressive for a 4x4 mini PC like this. Definitely some of the highest Geekbench scores that I've seen out of these mini PCs so far. The next thing I tested was Cinebench R23. In quiet mode, we got an 11,855, and in performance mode, that score jumped up to 13,356. And when it comes to CPU temps on this thing, highest that I've seen so far is 89 degrees Celsius. And of course, that might sound high to some people, but these newer 13th gen Intel chips do run much hotter in desktops. I was really impressed by how much power they're pushing to this and also being able to keep it cool in this small form factor. I also ran some benchmarks on the iGPU, and we've actually seen this quite a few times, but we haven't tested this with DDR5 RAM. And after all, when it comes to these iGPUs, it's going to utilize that system RAM as VRAM, and it does look like either the drivers or that RAM is really helping out, because with 3D Mark Wildlife, we've got a 15,163. I also ran 3D Mark Night Raid, coming in with a 21,868. And finally, Time Spy with a 2098. Just to put this into perspective for you, same chip with DDR4 RAM, we're around 1800 with Time Spy, so we definitely have a little bit of a jump there given that faster RAM. And of course, we had to test out some PC gaming. Here's OG Skyrim, still one of my favorite games, 1080p, medium, and we're at a constant 60 FPS. With these Intel Iris XE graphics, going to the older stuff is really going to work out very well at 1080p. You shouldn't have trouble with any of the Valve Source games, Half-Life 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and of course Skyrim here is running great. So let's take it up a little bit. We've got Forza Horizon 5, and I was actually really impressed by the performance. We're at 900p, low settings, and Intel's resolution scaling technology XESS is set to balance. And with it set up like this, we got an average of 76 FPS. Now, even at balance with XESS, you can really tell that resolution scale. So I'd say, you know, 720p with no scaling on low settings would probably be the way to go. Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Remastered has always been really hard on these Intel Iris Xe graphics. And uh, it hasn't changed too much. I mean, we're getting a little better performance, but we can't quite run this at 60. We're at 720p low, and by the end of this, I had an average of 49 FPS. And the final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. 720p, low. I do have V-Sync on, really does help out with games like this, and even the Spider-Man game we just tested. We got an average of 56 FPS, so we're so close. I mean, we're right there. Maybe adding a little bit of resolution scale or even enabling dynamic resolution scale would really help out. 
Now, one thing I'd actually like to test on this, even though we're working with USB 4 20 gig, is an eGPU. So if the interest is there, let me know in the comments below. I can come back with another video. Now, we're not going to be able to get the full potential out of USB 4 using an eGPU, only having a 20 gig bus, but we should be able to get better performance than the integrated graphics here. Another thing I always like to monitor while I'm doing my testing on these mini PCs is total system power consumption. This can be really important to people around the world who have to pay more for energy. While I've got this up and running doing all of my tests, it's also plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall. And remember, these are all in performance mode. Quiet and balanced will be a bit lower here, but at idle, this is pulling 18 watts. Average gaming does jump up to 82, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 97 watts. Now that's with the TDP the way it's set up. We could actually go into the BIOS and manually up it or use something like Intel Tuning Utility to up the wattage. It will pull more power. You probably get better performance, but it's gonna get hotter. And I think the way they have it set up in performance mode is really awesome for this form factor. First impressions of the i9 powered Simply Nook Onyx. CPU performance here is absolutely amazing, and I kind of expected it to be. 14 cores, 20 threads, and a super small form factor. Got those higher clocks, and in performance mode, the CPU will plow through anything you want to throw at it. It's definitely lacking in the iGPU department, but that's kind of been the case with these Intel chips. Hopefully they get the ball rolling on some better iGPUs. But for everyday desktop needs, this could definitely replace somebody's larger desktop. I mean, it does have a lot of power here. And remember, we do have USB 4, only running at 20 gigs. If you want to see an eGPU connected to the Onyx, let me know in the comments below. I can come back with another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. You can head over to Simply Nook if you want to learn a little more. And they do have a full configuration wizard. You can choose the amount of RAM, storage. I mean, you can go all out with these. Or you could kind of pick one up bare bones if you wanted to. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.